resource people as they are called, uh, as uh, friends with whom it's nice to work for some time, nice to meet them again. And certainly technology has a very important role there, uh, but it has to be an enabling role. Uh, our country right now is uh, stuffed with techno-romantics who are using technology sometimes to suggest as if the teacher is going to be replaced, uh, which is terrible. I, I think the uh, greatest uh, marketeers of technology uh, wouldn't like to uh, agree that that's uh, how, it, how it should be done. But that's how the ethos has got created. So I feel very, uh, very, very, very concerned uh, about the use of money for this sector. Uh, there's a great potential there, but certainly it has to be done without too much excitement. The trouble with technology is the same that children have with Chinese toys. They get too excited. <laughs> <laughs> because they do so many things. <laughs> Lights come from here, sounds come from there, and then the child is lost. The child's desire to play uh, is, is finished, and that's the trouble uh, with, with some of these new gadgets. So we have to remember the longer story of education. Education is not a new story. It's one of the oldest stories of humankind. Uh, and so we have to remember the, the lessons which we learned, uh, sir, from your remarks that uh, engagement with children uh, in terms of the heritage of learning and heritage of certain methodologies, techniques, um, uh, that engagement is very necessary. Uh, my last point, uh, pardon me again for a hobby horse, <laughs> which I pursue wherever I can. The heritage crafts of every community in South Asia are some of the greatest neglected resources of learning that we have. And no less a lawyer an advocate like Mahatma Gandhi, who was a professional lawyer, spoke for them but failed <laughs> to persuade the nation to take crafts more seriously. They are, not, they are not to be learned just for the sake of becoming capable of self-employment. Uh, no, that's not the purpose, uh, even though many Gandhians like to talk about them like that. They have a deeper aesthetic value. They have a deeper psychological value. They have an ethos building and a self-regenerating capacity uh, in all parts of the world, but certainly in our part of the world, where uh, they have had a very deep place in culture, in civilization, in economy, and so on. And Tibetan arts and crafts are the world over famous for their depth, uh, for their engagement with the larger questions of life. I think a craft corner, a craft lab, uh, in training of teachers in these heritage crafts, um, in, uh, involvement of professional master crafts men and women uh, in residence in schools, creation of opportunities when they can be resident craftspeople in schools for a few months so that um, children uh, approach them, children work with them. Uh, and and uh, when learning occurs in the context of a craft, it's a very, very different kind of experience. Uh, and, and that experience is, it certainly adds the W to that whole holistic <laughs> point that Arun was making this morning. It's a very holistic kind of learning that takes place. And uh, I, again, I know where Gandhiji failed. Uh, very few of us can succeed in making this um, uh, age in the kinds of times we are living in when technology is replacing all forms of manual work, unfortunately, to make a plea for uh, um, uh, heritage crafts of various kinds, uh, I I I I including the arts with which they are integrally related in either music, in hands work, in art, in visual forms, uh, in so many other forms, is a very difficult exercise, this, this pleading. And I hope that Tibetan administration will uh, take up this agenda, uh, work out the finances, uh, look for institutions to collaborate with. There are so many in our country. Uh, and around South Asia. Uh, and I'm sure uh, Tibet's, uh, oh, the Tibetan community itself has many very good institutions working in this area. The only question is how do we deploy their expertise and their uh, strengths in schools at all levels from primary level upwards? That deployment, that connection is what is important. Otherwise, the resources are there. They are all over the place. Each time I come to Dharamshala, uh, I notice those resources uh, just walking down a street, you can see people in their own shops being, uh, you know, engaged in uh, that work, whether it's to do with, uh, you know, weaving, it's to do with spinning, various other things are there. These people are teachers. Th these people are people uh, who have maintained a certain tradition, 
uh, with great sense of self-motivation and a sense of beauty and, and a sense of rigor. And when children work with them, remarkable things happen. So it's really a question of how do we deploy community resources as well as expert resources to create a corner, even if it's not part of you know, CBSC or whosoever is the custodian of the official curriculum. I think we'll have many opportunities tomorrow to come back to that issue of examination and how best we can negotiate it without losing all of our freedom and, and all of our right to freedom, uh, which is ultimately the, uh, you know, the goal of all uh, this uh, reform and strengthening of education uh, in the context which is a very, very, um, um, I should say, um, challenging human historical context in which our meeting has been held today. So thank you very much for this uh, uh, session. These afternoon sessions have been very productive, very interesting and successful. I know uh, elaborate recording has been done, which will now lead to elaborate notes taking and minutes to be produced. Uh, it's a daunting task. I thank all the organizers for giving me this opportunity to organize and chair this session. Thank you very much indeed.